Intel's behavior has been all over the place lately. First of all, they released the weird X299 platform, which has an i5 in the lineup for some reason. I mean, who'd buy that? And then they released Coffee Lake, which is actually a very competitive CPU, but it just kind of isn't available anywhere, and they're still using toothpaste as Tim. We've also kind of starting to find out that they might be releasing a 10 nanometer based CPU in December, but then kind of only have it available in quarter two of 2018. I mean, why release it then if you can't have anybody buy it? And then we find out that they're working together with AMD to bring out an Intel based APU with Vega graphics in it. I mean, everybody's kind of been reading rumors about this, but you kind of dismiss it as that'll never happen. And then even more unlikely is they hire Raja Kaduri, who's the head of, a or was the head of AMD's graphics card development department. Why would they do that? They don't even have graphics cards. Uh, well, I mean, they do have graphics cards in their CPUs, but still, it doesn't really make sense. Or does it? Is it because of AMD's Ryzen that Intel is acting like a drunk teenager, or is there a bigger reason for their drunkardness? Now, the first reason on everybody's lips for why Intel is acting like a chicken with its head cut off is because, well, Ryzen, obviously. Ryzen has come into the, in, in, into the CPU marketplace and is just absolutely dominating Intel. AMD's market sales share has gone from 27% back in March to over 50% in August. That's terrifying to a company like Intel because, well, the desktop market space is quite a big part of their actual income. Although they, they're they more worried about their actual server part because their Xeons, it's, it's just an absolute money racket. They're making so much money off the Xeons. And yes, Threadripper and Epic are, are quite dangerous in this marketplace. But I think because of how the buyers of that kind of CPU work, they're probably gonna go with Intel because well, they're more trusted in this space, I guess. I base this information purely on speculation. I don't have any actual insight into this though. But I think that this isn't the main reason that Intel is acting so crazy. I think the company that's terrifying Intel the most at the moment is actually Nvidia. Now, you might think, why would they be worried about Nvidia? They're not even competing in the same space. Well, in the consumer desktop arena, they're not competing in the same space, but they're cons competing in the same space in something that's even potentially way more lucrative in the future, and that's AI. Now, AI is something that I don't understand the processing at all, to be honest, um, and if you do understand it, please do let me know in the comments. I know it might be a bit of a type out, but please help me out here. But apparently, AI processing is broken up into two parts. First, there's just kind of training the AI algorithm. Um, and then there's executing the AI algorithm. Now, by some luck of the draw, graphics cards are really good at training AI algorithms. CPUs are rubbish at it, they can't do it very well at all. So for Nvidia to dominate in this space, they don't have to develop a specific product at all. All they have to do is take their GPU and plug it into the thing, and then Skynet can happen. But the thing is, that's not the only part of generating AI, or processing AI, I guess, is probably the right term. And you might just go, well, all Intel has to do is create a, a, a processing thing that's very good at actually executing the AI algorithm that NVIDIA's GPU generated. Um, well, the thing is, that's also not a market that's completely open. Uh, Intel's been bombarding it with new products for a while now. Almost every week you see a new article about how Intel is releasing a new product that's gonna, it's usually ASIC based and it's gonna dominate the AI executing space. Um, but they have a competitor in that space as well, which is the quite famous Qualcomm. Now Qualcomm competing with Intel is also not something that kind of makes sense because Qualcomm makes makes uh, phone CPUs and sues Apple. Like, what does that have to do with, with, with Intel? But they actually have a, a processor on the market that's extremely good at executing AI functions. So it means between Nvidia and Qualcomm, there isn't much space in this market for Intel, um, but Intel wants to change that because, well, all of the money is gonna go to AI in the future because, you know, Skynet is a very hungry, money-hungry endeavor. 
Now, that's one of the reasons I think, or it's probably the main reason I think, that Intel hired Raja Kaduri. Now, in the official release, um, Intel was saying that they hired Raja Kaduri because they want to develop their own actual discrete GPU. But why would Intel want to develop a gaming GPU? I mean, they apparently tried or wanted to back in like 2007, and well, everybody just made a huge joke of it and it just kind of didn't ever happen. Um, so I don't think they'd want to do that because competing directly with Nvidia in that space is completely suicidal because Nvidia is kind of busy bending AMD over a table and having at them and AMD's been doing it for a long time. So why would, a why would Intel do it any better? I think they hired someone like Raja Kaduri and a lot of other, other kind of engineers in this space because they want to develop a GPU for AI training algorithms so that they can have one box that can kind of do AI training algorithms and executing algorithms and then just kind of dominate the world with it. So yeah, I think this is the mo one of the reasons that Intel is acting so crazy at the moment is because they feel like they're losing out on a market that's gonna be one of the most important ones in the future of, of kind of computing, I guess. Anyway, that's my take on Intel's drunken behavior. If you like the video, do like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. If you disliked it, you can just kind of do the opposite of that. I don't know if you can desubscribe, unless you're already subscribed. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Until next time, bye-bye.